Hello there again and welcome to Fin of Discs. My name is Still Nico and today we're going to go through my bag. So we're essentially going to go through the setup that I had left from last season. The most most of the di these discs I did use last season. So this will be a two-part video in it. That first I will check out what's in the bag currently, and then in the next video next week we'll be looking at what areas might be up for debate, uh, might be sort of uh, deemed uh, not perfect and I might compare some discs that I already have to those areas and see what if I will change anything or not. But I decided to change a little bit with the location so now we're outside and we're actually on my what we call it terrace or balcony it's in the first floor because it's it's a nice day outside it's a little chilly but I'm okay so it's around five degrees negative in Celsius I'm terrible at um, converting to Fahrenheit in my head so I will just say here what it is in Fahrenheit uh, but you'll get the picture so it's I'm okay except for my hands so maybe it'll make it <laughs> be a bit more effective Okay, let's start from the slower discs uh, that we have over here. So, uh, my putter, putting putter is a Zero Soft Pure from, from Latitude 64. It's a very flexy putter uh, that I do like because it's quite sticky, it's quite um, shallow, and it's sort of get a good hold of it. As an for mostly forehand approach disc, I have a Z Sparkle Zone, a Ledgestone disc <coughs> from last year. Very flat, uh, very shallow again. Nice to nice to hit those forehand lines with. Then over here on the top back, I have a lot of discs, by the way. So <laughs> most people probably don't need this many discs, and I don't. But I just have gotten used to having. A lot of options so continuing with the forehand theme we have a tactic so a hard exo uh, so, sorry soft exo tactic uh, also quite quite gummy quite good in the hand it's a little slower than the zone and also I use this when I want the, when I want fewer skips so when I want it to stick to the ground <laughs> ground a bit easier that's when I use this or with the backhand for a sort of a shorter stall type shot, a uh, hyzer, hyzer type shot. Then I have uh, the Paul Macbeth sort of signature series Luna from 2020. I think I remember correctly. This is my workhorse for the very straight um, straight shots with the backhand, so across sort of short holes across tunnel or something like that where I need to need it to get keep straight then I don't leave, need a lot of distance so this will probably be used for I will then convert these to feet when I edit this but it will probably be used for shots around 80-90 uh, meters around that or less than that but probably 80-90 is the max then I will have this one is a hack lab um, Active Premium Sensei, so I like the feel. It's quite slick, but I like the feeling behind. It's a little bit more. Um, uh, it's a little bit. Um, uh, wait a second. <laughs> a little bit more stable is what I was going for. This is the problem with your when you're speaking not in your native language. But yeah, this is a little bit more st stable. So when I wanted it, wanted to not go too much over and, and just then fade, go straight and then fade. This is what I use for mostly with backhand. Then I have an interesting disc, discs, inter, interesting disc in the uh, Castaplast and Berry uh, Berg. <coughs> so this is a Leif Svensson team series. I'm not very familiar with who, who Leif Svensson is, but it has a cool stamp. So that's what I decided to pick it up from a website. I had felt around with this um, in, a, in a local disc golf store, a similar um, one, so this is a K1 Soft. Uh, I like the feel of it, uh, but I just had never tried it, so I decided to order a few of these, and I really love the fact that it's very slow. <coughs> so I use this for different approaches with the backhand or a, or a forehand, 
where I want it to sort of go straight or fade a little bit and just not go too far. <coughs> so that's a good disc for that. Then I have a Les Stone Tour Series uh, Jawbreaker Meteor, which is very understable. I don't really use it a lot with um, regular backhands or forehands. This is mostly for jump butting. Uh, and those types of uh, situations where I want it to glide a little bit more than my putter would with the putting style. So that's what it's a very niche, 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 whatever you might call it, use for it. But then let's get into the mid ranges over here. Uh, so here my probably workhorse in many cases, or let's start from the really, really workhorse, so is a disc wrapped bus, a Z, Elite Z bus, which is great. It's flat, I like flat discs, and also it's great with the, now that it's beat in a little bit, it's a nice sort of, you can release it in a little bit higher, it will flip straight, and then just go straight for miles. I also have used it a little bit on forehands, especially last year started to study it a little bit to get a little bit better at it, because it's a very good tool to use, for example, um, a little flip up straight forehand or an Anheuser that will carry it more to the left, so it's a good disc for that. Then a little bit more understable, I have again a lead stone disc. This is a Crystal Sparkle, Crystal Flex Sparkle Meteor. Very nice in the hand, a little bit domier than the bus, but it's a bit more understable, so this is mostly for backhands where I want to. Um, release a little bit more hyzer and then have it go straight or then release it a little hyzer or flat and then have it go. So it's a turnover disc mostly in many cases. Then a little bit more stable than the bus would be my MD3. So this is a Sealine MD3 from the last uh, Innova made batch. So I ordered this from the United States of America and I actually this is mostly mostly backhand or well, forehand sometimes as well so it's a little bit more stable than the bus so i can depend on it a little bit more for example when it's windy or um, in that type of situations where i need it to fade a bit stronger uh, i've also thrown a hole in one with this one last year <coughs> so that's nice uh, then i have a little bit more stable than that as well, or quite a bit more stable. So this is an Axiom Pyro, um, so Prism Pyro. Uh, so basically, it's a Proton Pyro, but it's a, it has a lot nice, nice sort of sparkles. I don't know if you can see them, but but yeah. So it's very flat, very good with the forehand. I use it a lot with the forehand. Sometimes with the backhand if I need it a very strong fade from a mid-range, but still usable um, in more cases than the next one, which is a mutant. So this is the sort of um, European Disc Golf Championship release mutant uh, that were released uh, last year. I bought bought a few of these from that release. It's, it's an interesting, <laughs> interesting disc for sure, so it's very flat, very edgy. So you can see the different, it's, it, they say that it's the cyber truck of mid-ranges. I tend to agree, it doesn't really have any round, round angles, but it's a good, dependable, very, very overstable disc. So when I need that with the mid-range uh, type shot, then that's what I will use. So mid-range is most, like, uh, most often the buzz will be for ranges from 90 to 100 meters around that 85 to 100 if I be more precise but let's get into the fairways I have quite a few fairways there's some specialty discs also here that I will then show you later but but um, okay so there are eight discs here so let's start with the slower speeds um, we have here from MVP a neutron signal, very understable. So a tunnel, sort of easy tunnel shots around 90 to 100, where 
I don't want to sort of push the bus too far. I want to just give an easy, easy little shot with the backhand. So this will be it or a turnover shot for longer distances. So this is quite handy in that also very flat, but a nice feeling in the hand. Then we have also MVP a resistor that very overstable used mainly for forehand approaches, forehand shots that, that where I needed to fade quite a bit. <coughs> similar, similar speed range. Then um, let's see, we have an Instinct. It's not as overstable as the resistor, so this is used when I needed to fade, but also carry a bit straight on a further, uh, a little bit further than the resistor would. But it's it's still quite stable. It's not overstable, but quite stable, dependable in windy situations as well. Then I have an Essence, which is my really my workhorse for from the fairways. Uh, so I, I love the feel of the essence, the rim width, the rim depth all work very well with my hand and I like it for, it's now it's a bit beating so it starts to turn over a little bit more than when, it's, when it was new so I use these for hyzer flip, flip ups, you will see from the story I'm telling that I do like to release it on an hyzer so that's uh, quite quite common for me. So a little bit of a hyzer flip up then, then, then going or then to a turnover shot. So in the woods, very usable and very much used for ranges from 100 meters to maybe 110, 15. 15 might be a little, little uh, reaching for it, but anyway. Then I will have, I have another essence, which is the Zen uh, essence, so Nate Perkins. Signature series, series, uh, Meta Essence, very cool pearly um, plastic, a little bit domier maybe than the regular Essence, but great feeling the hand, and it's, as it's quite new, it was released yet last year, I haven't thrown a lot with it yet, but it's a little bit more stable, so it's a little bit more dependable, and I can trust it not to flip, us as, flip up as much as the Essence does, or the regular one. Then, on a more interesting disc, I would say not a lot of people, maybe at least here in Finland, have it in their bag. Is an is a sort of um, what was it? Um, Thought Space Athletics Mantra with a very cool, very cool stamp and a cool plastic. So uh, quite an understable disc. So I use this, it's more understable than the, than the beat of Essence even. So I use it for turnover shots, both forehand and backhand, where I need it to flip up and then continue doing a little bit of flip up. So, but it doesn't burn out, <coughs> so it's still very usable. So it's a nice, nice disc to have in the back. Then on the very overstable side, I have a Streamline Discs Flare, a special edition stamp, so this is Quite cool, very overstable. Many say I don't. I haven't compared. I do have a Firebird in my closet, a Sea Lion Firebird that is very stable. But I think this might be even more stable than that. So it's very, very overstable, very dependable for flex forehands, for example, flex backhands, or when you need to get out of trouble or when you need to fade very strongly. Um, so usable disc for that. And then. We have a little bit longer. This is this is already considered con, sort of considered a distance driver, but I think I mainly use it for sort of fairway driver type shots. So it's an Axiom Discs Vanish, uh, so Proton Vanish. Um, quite flat, fits well in the hand, mostly for backhand. So flip up backhand shots where I need to go straight, a little bit longer than I would get with an SNS, so I don't think it goes a ton longer, maybe 5 meters or 10 meters at max, but so in at some situations I just feel more comfortable with this when I need to try to reach something. But it has been in my bag for quite a long time, it's, it's a nice looking disc I think. 
Then the last area uh, before the specialty discs, I will leave that one in there. Uh, so here is an area that might be uh, element to changing. Okay, this is also something that could have been in the fairways. So uh, S line PD. Uh, this is also from the last, um, obviously PDs haven't been really introduced in s lines from the new Swedish factories, but this is um, from the last batch, I don't know, maybe last batch of Innovamade PDs that I ordered from the United States um, a little more than a year ago. I have a few of these, this is the only one in my bag, so mostly for, also quite stable, so mostly for forehands. And, and backhands where I need it to fade strongly, but I need more distance than, for example, um, from the instinct or or resistor or something like that. It's still glides quite a bit, so it's it's a very usable disc. I like it, I like it a lot. Then for the fastest ones, these are all 12 or over uh, speed, so the most, uh, let's say, unusable one. It's, it doesn't get a lot of use. It's a PD2, Discmania C line. Very, very overstable. It has a little bit of a dome in the middle, but very gumming plastic. I like the feel of the plastic, but it's so overstable that there is a limited amount of uses for it. So it doesn't get a lot of throws on a regular day, but it's just nice to have it there when you need something like that. Um, I'm very organized with my discs over here. <laughs> Then, uh, then I would go with the uh, Innova Corvette. So this is a 14-speed disc, disc um, but it's it's um, for my arm speed. It's a little bit too fast, uh, sort of it, with its factory number. So it's it's not quite minus one two for me. It's quite stable, and the rim is obviously very very wide so I do use it for a backhands where I need need to depend on it for example in, in the windy situations this is my go-to disc to sort of uh, depend that it doesn't flip up too much but it still glides and goes uh, quite far so I would say this is backhand also forehand sometimes where I, when I feel that my forehand is up to the task of throwing this because it it needs for me to get use out of it, I need to be able to get some power into the forehand. So, but sometimes I do use it. It's um, a good tool to have in the bag. Then I have an Innova Daedalus, or in Finnish, a Daedalus. <coughs> but it's um, also a distance driver, um, champion of plastic, quite flat. I use it quite a lot actually with backhands and forehands. Uh, it flips up a little bit, but doesn't burn out uh, too much. So it's it's one of my go-to drivers when I need to reach reach distances that are um, upwards from 120. Depending on what my um, how warm am I and how good my timing is during the day, it these remaining discs might might be in the ranges of 120 to 135 meters. It depends, but it's it's quite used, uh, a sort of a workhorse type disc as well. But then is my <laughs> my holy grail, so to speak. Not it's not going to be very exciting for you guys, but it's exciting for me because I've thrown it for a long time. So we have a Star Boss uh, from Innova, quite domey, very glidey. This is my max distance driver that I use when I need to. When I need to get um, some place, obviously not very suitable for very windy situations because it's speed up quite a bit. So it's already a disc that will start when I get a good hold of it. It will it will turn uh, quite a bit, so I will get the nice distance line out of it. But also when I don't have the timing and my day is not greatest throwing wise, then it's, it will be still quite stable. So. It's quite a usable disc in many scenarios, but I am looking to replace it because it's in, it has been in my bag for for years. Um, I don't know, probably five, six, seven years in the bag already. So I don't want to lose it. So I want I would want to 
find a sort of usable uh, replacement for it. So we might be seeing this one again in the springtime in other videos where I try to try to replace it maybe and as, as, as definitely in the next video when I'm talking about the different discs that might not be in my bag this season anymore but I do like the disc a lot and I hate the fact that bosses are not discussed that often because it's always destroyer 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 from Innova maybe it's because of the rim width but I personally like bosses a lot <coughs> Um, then the speciality discs. I have a secret, secret compartment here that I will reveal in a minute. But first, <laughs> also doesn't see a lot of throws, but this is a Discmania Genius that I got um, from a mystery bag a year mystery box a year ago. Very very understable. Uh, some turnover shots, some weird shots that I need to make where I need a super understable disc. This would also probably be a good roller disc if I threw rollers more, so that's one area of improvement I need to learn next year to sort of see if there's any use in that throw because I don't really throw them. But it's in the bag because there's space for it and there might be some use cases. Um, but then this secret compartment <laughs> I have these are my get out of jail discs that I that's why they're in a separate <laughs> separate department so I don't really go there except in the situations where I'm really inside the forest and I need to think about something <laughs> that I can that I cannot do with the normal throw so first up on the understable side on the super understable side is a starlight mamba so it, you can imagine that a mamba itself is quite understable, but then when you put the fact that it's starlight, so I think it's... Uh, I don't know what the weight is anymore, it doesn't read it, or it can't read it anymore, but it's in the range of, I don't know, 150, 160 probably. So that lightness will make it even more understable, and then given the fact that it's pretty beat up, so... And it basically is for... I use it for... Tomahawks or oopsie as we call it in Finnish where I need to throw it like this and it's a it flips up it goes directly straight and just flips up like this so it's sort of a it's actually used like a tomahawk in my in my bag so it it has gotten me out of out of many troubles so I still keep it in my bag so that's a speciality disc then another speciality disc I have is the tilt so the meta tilt uh, that I have to say gets a bad rep obviously it's not usable for all types of situations but I, I don't throw thumbers I have no interest in sort of getting a callus hair or tra training my thumb to be able to handle those because you need them what once in two three rounds but when you do need them this is what I use so I use it as a straight hyzer disc it goes up and goes down uh, directly as many of you probably have seen in in the tilt uh, review videos around so don't use it on a normal fairway uh, when I need to get over something and need to get a very tight flex line or something like that then I will use this because you can throw it like this and it will not go left or right it will just go sort of do the flip up much like the uh, mamba but in a different type of throw but yeah that's the tilt. So in total, I have quite a many discs. 5, 10, 15, 25, 28 discs maybe in the bag. So a little bit too many. Maybe. <coughs> but then what else do I have in the bag? I have a water bottle. Obviously that's needed. Uh, so this is a bottle that should keep and does keep liquids either hot or cold depending on what's your preference when you put it in the bag then I have here a rangefinder so especially on courses that you have never been to be before it's a usable tool to gauge distances obviously you have usually those placards in on, at the T signs uh, that it will let you know what the distances are but especially on a par 4 where you throw the first shot and then you arrive somewhere 
and you need to figure out what's the distance you need for the next throw, then this is what you will go for, or this is what I go for then to raise the distance because visually it's sometimes hard to tell if there's no clear um, elements that you can study or clear signs that you can say that okay what's the distance because if it's 80 or 100 meters it might make a big difference in the disc selection. So that's in my bag, um, there's nothing else here, oh there's Paul and and here I have sunglasses so in case it starts uh, the sun starts shining and I need to look cooler than I did before no, <laughs> but anyway those are there then I have a marker for discs to write my name in with I used to have a pencil there as well but I don't anymore apparently so I've lost it so pencil for the situations where for example if you're in competition and you need to write up results and uh, st stuff like that so that's where I use I also have a towel that is quite important especially here in Finland then I have this this back tag that is used in back tag competitions between clubs or with the, within a disc golf club. This is from my current disc golf club here in here in Finland. You need to be a part of a disc golf club in order to be a member of the BDGA and then go into events. At least I think that's mandatory, but that's how mo most of us do it. But that's about it basically. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for being interested and just as a teaser for the next video these, these are some of the discs that will do come into discussion whether they will make the bag or not so looking forward to seeing in the springtime whether whether there is some changes that I can make to my bag to maybe make my game a bit better or worse <laughs> when I lose the comfortable discs from my bag but yeah that's what it that's what it that was it for this video thanks for watching please comment down below what were your most surprising discs that I had what do you have similar discs that I have uh, what are your go-to discs and, and so on interested to see what people answer if they have any similarities to mine but yeah that was it for the video, thanks for watching, please comment any other ideas you might have for videos I will be uh, following up. And also follow me on Instagram and at Discs. you can find it here, find it there. I will be posting about um, little videos, little uh, background stuff, maybe some snippets to tease the coming up, YouTube videos coming up, what they will be about and so on. So see you there, but until next time. So long.